Hey, future badass business owners. So you're thinking about starting a painting business, but you're curious as to what steps you need to take in order to get this new business off the ground. Well, that's what we're going to cover today. First, you need to make sure that this is the right business for you because you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it. And a lot of times people underestimate how much it goes from being something you enjoy to something that you get tired of doing. Now, before you start, it's really important that you do your research. This is probably by far the most critical thing that you're going to do in your new business because it's going to ultimately save you time and money. But you're probably wondering, what type of research are you going to do? Well, you're going to focus in on four key areas. The first of which is going to be your competition. Then it's going to be your legal requirements, the money needs that this new business is going to have, and your marketing. Let's take a closer look at each of them. First, you need to research your competition. You need to look at the big ones and the small ones because you need to know what they're doing poorly. A lot of times it's really easy to point out what other businesses are doing wrong but you do need to understand what that is. But it's also very important that you know what they're doing very well, because what they're doing well are things that you want to copy, emulate, or be better at than they are. You also need to find out how you can stand out by taking what they do poorly and what they do well. It's going to open up the door that's going to help make you special. What's going to be your secret sauce and how are you going to stand out over them as you do this research and finding out the difference. Some other things that you want to check out is what is the quality of the products or services? For example, in the painting business, all paints are not equal. Some are a better quality paint than other paints. Are they using cheap paints, which is why they're able to do cheap sources? Are they not doing some of the uh, specialty stuff as far as cutting in and ensuring the lines are nice and clean? Is that how they're able to do it cheap? Do they hire cheap labor? You want to understand what the quality of the products and services are because you need to be able to figure out how you're going to stand out. You know, what do they charge? Once again, people charge based off of different things. Some people undercharge for the services that they offer. Some undercharge, but they don't give as much for that value. You need to know what your competition are doing, because if you are going to be a little bit higher than them, which you probably want to be, you need to be able to explain why and what it is that they get better. This is not a race to the bottom in pricing. I don't want you to research all the prices and say, okay, I'm going to come in lower than everybody else. That's not the deal. I don't want you to be the cheapest, but I want you to be able to articulate why you are better and and how you are better than your competition. Not that you're going to slam them, but in order for you to be able to convey what your true value is, you need to understand everything about your competition. Because at the end of the day, I don't want you just to be another painting business. No, I want you to focus on the pain point you will solve for your customers, and I want you to stand out over them. Now let's look at the legal requirements that you're going to have for your business. Are you going to do business as an LLC or as a doing business as an LLC is a legal entity in which you do it with your state. It's a doing business as is basically you as a person doing business as the name of the company that you are creating. Each state will determine what your minimum requirements are. Some will let you do it as DBAs and others will require that you form an LLC. You need to do your research and study what it is that you are required to do in your area. Some other legal requirements you want to look at is the licensing, permits, insurance. Each city, state, and county are going to have different requirements. So it's important that you look at all three of those areas and determine which one is required for your particular area. Now, the, another key area of your research is going to be in the funds that are needed. You are going to need money for your new business. And these are just a few of the things that you're going to need. Tools, equipment, vehicle, brick and mortar. If you're going to have one of those, advertising, licensing, etc. You are probably not going to have a brick and mortar, but let's face it, in the painting business, you're going to have a lot of equipment. Hopefully you already have some of that equipment that can help get you going. But if not, you need to know what is the cost of the minimum requirements for you to get your business going? You can bootstrap and you can buy as your business grows, but what's the minimum that you have? You can use your old pickup truck. You do not need to go out and buy a brand new pickup truck. All right. So just know what your minimum money needs are and make sure that you're ready to be able to do those things. Now, we also want to talk about you getting paid. 
paid because working your butt off and not getting paid is one of the silliest things you can do. When you're getting paid, it's going to involve invoicing and bidding with your customers, the accounting system that you're going to use, bookkeeping if you're going to use one, if you're going to hire somebody to do it. At the end of the day, you want to get paid. You won't believe how many small business owners do the work and fail to get paid. And then they wonder why they're not getting their money because they did not have a system in place and they just kept moving along. Marketing and branding. You need to have a plan. How are your customers even going to know that you exist? How are you going to be shouting it from the rooftops to let them know? What will be your marketing plan? How are you going to get the word out? Now, there's different types of advertising. There's free versus paid advertising. Free advertising is going to be your word of mouth, Google business, Bing business, Facebook, realtors, networking. Take full advantage of free advertising, especially the word of mouth piece, which is the number one thing. There are people that have built amazing businesses and they've never once spent any money on any kind of advertising. But you need to know what it is you plan to do to take advantage of that free advertising. Paid advertising could be Facebook ads, postcards, flyers, different things like that. Are you going to be spending any money on that? What are the costs if you're going to? Once again, I think you can do almost everything through word of mouth. I am huge on connecting with realtors painters. I don't think that you understand. Realtors can be your best friend. They can refer a lot of business, get in touch with the HOAs because HOAs are a lot of times requiring for folks to paint their houses on a regular basis. And you can be that person that gets out there. Now, are you going to have to hire someone in the painting business? Some of you might go solo. Some of you will probably have to hire some people. So you need to make sure you do your research on hiring people because you want to make sure that if somebody comes aboard your business, whether you hire them or you use them as a contractor, they represent your business. So you need to make sure that you're hiring the best, that you look at your training and onboarding plan. How do you plan to make sure that they know that they're an extension of your business? How will you even pay them? And what's, do you need a payroll company or are you going to try to do it on your own? So if you are going to use independent contractors and or hire some people, you need to make sure you do your homework on how you will handle that entire thing. Now you also need to have a way to pull together all this research and everything that you're looking at and a lot of times people will call it a business plan. I like to call it a success blueprint, but no matter what, you need to have a plan. At the end of the day, you must have some type of business plan because the business plan is going to be like the roadmap, if you will, of how you're going to get your business open and then how you plan to run that business afterwards and figuring out how much money you plan to make in that business. Because in a traditional business plan, they're basically used to help people borrow money. They want to buy a franchise. Sometimes they will be required for leases, stuff like that. But when we're thinking of a business plan, we're thinking more like a success plan because we still want to make sure that we cap capture all that information that I just mentioned, because that's going to help you be successful. One more thing, I need you to slow down. Something else that you really need to start learning from day one is learn your business numbers. So many small businesses come to me later after they've been in business for several years, and now they finally decide that they want to try to learn their business numbers. One, I applaud them for knowing that this is a weak link in their business, but there's lots of money they left on the table because they didn't learn their business numbers early on. I'm going to encourage you to learn your business numbers in the very beginning of starting your business. Because when you know your business numbers, we're talking about pricing, markup margin, profit and loss statements, just to name a few. It's you understanding the numbers of your business. They don't have to be complicated. I do all kinds of videos here on the channel that are meant to help you get this business up and running and for you to understand what their business numbers are. We break them down. I definitely encourage you to look at some of those, especially when it comes to the pricing parts. Uh, there's a whole series on knowing and understanding your profit and loss income statement. This is the report card of your business. It tracks all of the money in and out of your business. And you need to understand this from day one, because from the minute you take that first dollar, you make that first sale, guess what? You're going to start having a profit and loss statement because it tracks all the sales, minus your cost of goods, minus your expenses, equals your profits. It starts that whole trend of what I talk about all the time. Remember, you are running a business. You are not creating a job for yourself. And it's very important that from the very beginning, you identify as the business owner, not as the painter. Okay. You are a person who runs a painting business. You are not a painter. Yes, you happen to know how to paint and you will do the painting, but you are not a painter. You are a business owner who owns a painting company. And it's important you understand that from the very 
beginning. And once again, if you want to learn more about this, check out the other videos here on this channel and make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss any of those. And there's two courses to help get you off the ground. The first one is to start a small business over at startasmallbusinessstartcourse.com. It's also in the show notes. And also I have a Know Your Business Numbers course that is also down there as well. Both are two tools there to help you out. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button button so other people know that they should check out the channel. And like I said, hit subscribe so you never miss anything. Now get out there and be the badass that I know you are.